Hi, this is David. In this video, I'm going to show you how to register an application in Azure Active Directory. And this is useful if you want to use Azure Active Directory to authenticate users against an application. So step one is going to be to register that application in Azure Active Directory, or AAD, we sometimes use it's called for short. Now I have a, a um, an Azure account here. I've logged into the portal. Um, this happens to be a sample one called a Contoso, and I am an admin on this account. You will have to have permissions to do this, uh, but I want to get into Azure Active Directory. I happen to have an, act, an icon on my start screen, and I happen to have an icon here in the left menu for Azure Active Directory, but if you don't, that's not a problem. You can just go up here and search. You can search for Active Directory, and you see right there is Azure Active Directory, and find it that way. And once you're in here, here's the left menu. The option you want is App Registrations, which are right there. Select on app registrations, and then this brings up the app registrations blade, and you click up in this button that says new registration, and that's how I register an application. So only a few questions, and only a couple of them are required. The first one is a name. You want to give this a name that's um, easy to identify. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but if you come back to it later or somebody else come back to it, you want it to be easy for them to find it or to search for it. Um, and I'm going to call this one uh, GCAST app registration. That's fine. Um, the second question, and this is required also, you want to tell it who are, is able to authenticate against this application. Is it only users that are registered in this tenant, in this Contoso tenant that happens to be what I'm in? Is it other, is it this tenant plus other Active Directory tenants? Maybe I have, uh, I want to allow customers that are using AD, or maybe I are partners, or maybe I've got companies that we've acquired. want to have multiple Active Directory tenants and authenticate and against both of them. We have to set up a trust relationship for those. Uh, maybe it's multiple Apple, uh, multiple Active Directory tenants plus Microsoft accounts, and those are things like uh, Oh, Xbox and Skype accounts, and Outlook.com accounts, and uh, Hotmail accounts, Live accounts, et cetera, Live.com, et cetera, things like that. Or maybe I want to have personal accounts. You, uh, Active Directory has the ability to add, to register people that have Gmail addresses or addresses from emails and other companies. And even though they weren't created in Active Directory, to add them to them to say that, oh, I as an Active Directory, I, I trust this user. Now, to keep things simple, I'm just going to say only this tenant, only single tenant, not multi-tenant, not uh, personal accounts. The options don't really change much when you select those. And that's it. These two fields are required. There's another question on here that's optional. And in this one, if you happen to have an application that's web-based, either server or client-side, and you're doing authentication, or if you have a, a mobile application or a rich client application, it then after the user authenticates, there'll be some user interface that'll prompt the user you know, to authenticate. And once they've done so, and they've successfully authenticated, you'll probably want to redirect them to some page or some screen in your application. And this gives you the opp opportunity to do that here. Now, I don't have to do that here, first of all, because not every application has a user interface. You could use this for registering applications that are just service-based. They're just web service calls, for example. And also, you can go back and change this later if you want to. So I'm just going to leave it blank for right now, and that's it. Click on Register. It takes literally seconds, and I'm done. And show, this shows the details of that app registration. If I want to come back to it later, I can go back into Active Directory and click on App Registrations, and I may have to refresh it, but I can see there it is, GCAST App Registrations. If I, if I don't see it, you know, here's all applications. Here's the ones that I've created, and uh, I can always, you know, search for it this way. This, this box here lets me filter. So, again, another good reason why you want to name it something meaningful here. Click on that and there's the details here and from here you can change a lot of things including those redirect URIs here. You can also change, uh, here's the redirect URIs, I can say it's a web application and where does it redirect to it, it even gives you a few more options here. Uh, you can specify whether it's now, even though I said single tenant, I can change that to multi-tenant this time. So I can make some changes here. Now, uh, a lot of times you are going to need to create either a certificate or a secret, and that serves as kind of a password if you want to create some kind of a, a, a token for a user. So if I come in here um, in another video, I'm going to show you how to create a bearer token for a web service call, and a bearer token requires a client secret from within an application registration. And the way I do that is I click on the clients and certificates button here in my app, app registration, and 
that brings up this clients and certificates blade. And you see there's some tabs in here. I want the clients and secrets tab. And I just created this. So there are no client secrets yet, but I can create one by clicking on new client secret. I just give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, GCast secret right here. And I tell it, when does it expire? You know, maybe I want these things to expire really soon or not till two years later, or maybe I've got some custom expiration. With the custom expiration, I can actually set a start date. Maybe I want to create this secret now, but it's not going to go into effect till next month, for example. Well, I'll just say, all right, it's going to expire in three months. That's fine. And I click on add right here, and it gives me, now you can see that client secret, GCAS secret's here. It expires in three months, and it has a value. I need to copy that value and save it somewhere. Put it in a text file somewhere, in a lockdown directory, put it into a, a key vault somewhere, someplace safe, because this is important. Somebody that can use the secret can uh, use it as to create an authentication token and impersonate a user. So you definitely want to keep it secret, but you also need to copy it now. Because what will happen is that if you close this and go away and then come back tomorrow and go down to Active Directory, where is it, App Registrations, uh, this one right here, and then Clients and Secrets. And this is cached right now, but if I refresh this page, you'll notice when I re-authenticate, oops, I did the wrong one. I wanted to... We authenticate with that right there. It's gone. I missed my chance. So you really only get one opportunity to copy that value. So it's really important you copy it and put it in a safe place because when you come back to it tomorrow, then it's not going to be available for you. It is a secret and it's uh, it's not going to be regenerated. I'll show you later on in another video how to use that secret to do some things. But for right now, I've shown you how to register an application in Azure Active Directory and how to generate a client secret within that app registration. This is David. Thank you for watching.